Hey there, in this video we'll be looking at sequencers in Game Maker Studio 2.3. Sequencers are a new tool that allow you to create animations in Game Maker. So they can be used to create complex animations with sprites, objects and even sounds. So from small and quick animations to full cutscenes, you can do a lot with sequencers. In this video we'll be looking at how sequences can be created and how they can be used in game. Here are the timestamps for all the different sections in this video. Let's begin with the first one. So I'm gonna go into Game Maker Studio 2.3 which is in beta as of this video. I have a few assets here already which are a few sprites and a room. I've deleted all of the other groups. If you wanna learn more about the new asset browser, do check out my video on the IDE changes. Now in the sequences folder here, I'm gonna create a new sequence asset. I'm gonna keep the name sequence1 and now with our new sequence, a sequence editor has opened here. So this is a completely new part of the IDE where we can edit our sequence. The sequence editor has three main parts, the canvas, the track panel and the top sheet. The canvas is where you're gonna be placing and moving around all the elements of your sequence. Now everything you place in the sequence will be listed in the track panel. So each item in the sequence will be a separate track. Now the animation for all the tracks and all the frames and keyframes will be handled in the top sheet. So in a sequence you can place and animate sprites, objects and sounds. And you can also place a sequence inside a sequence. Now as an example, I'm gonna go into the asset browser, take this sprite of the bird and drop it into our sequence. So we have added our first track in the sequence. We can move it around in the canvas and see the track listed in the track panel. The track is called as bird since that is the name of the sprite. But you can simply rename it by pressing F2. Now you can also see the track in the dope sheet here. This is the lifetime of the track in the animation. So the track starts here and ends here. But as you can see, the sequence actually ends all the way here. Now the duration of the sequence can be changed here. Currently it's set to 60 frames which is 1 second. So I'm gonna change this to 180 which is 3 seconds. So now the sequence will be 3 seconds long. We can actually see the number of seconds by going here and changing it from frames to time. And now it shows us the number of seconds instead of frames. Now I'm gonna go back into that menu and change it back to frames. Now here we have the speed of the sequence which is set to 60 frames per second. And now in the dope sheet we can move our track around. We can also move the playhead to any frame. Now if I take the playhead and move it here, we can no longer see the bird. So at this point the track has ended. Now we can simply extend the track and make it as long as the sequence. So now the bird will always be there throughout the sequence. Now we can go into the track panel and click here to see the tracks inside the bird track. Right now we have one track here for the position. So this will be used to animate the position of the bird. If you don't have the track, you can add it from this menu. You can see the track in the dope sheet and here we have a keyframe. The current position of the bird is stored in this keyframe. So now for a basic animation, I'm gonna go to this frame. And now in the canvas, I'm gonna move the bird. You can also use these arrows to move it. So I'm gonna place it here. And now you can see a line here that shows the movement of the bird. If you go into the dope sheet, you can see a new keyframe on this frame. Now if you move the playhead between the two keyframes, then you can see the animation. You can make the animation shorter by moving the keyframe. And in the same way, you can also make it longer. I'm just gonna move it to this frame. And now I'm gonna add another keyframe on this frame. So I'll simply move the bird and the change will be recorded. So now we are animating the position between three keyframes. So you can see how when I move the bird, a new keyframe is created automatically. That happens because of this option. When this is enabled, all changes are recorded automatically. I'm gonna disable it to show you how we can place keyframes manually. So now on this frame, I'm gonna make some changes by simply moving the bird. And on the track panel, you can see the track turns golden and a star appears next to it. If you look in the dope sheet, there's no new keyframe. So the changes simply weren't recorded automatically because this option is turned off. 
we can now do that manually for a track by pressing this button. And now if you look in the top sheet, a new keyframe is there. So this is how you can manually place keyframes. Now I'm simply gonna enable auto keying and finish the animation. Now the animation can be played using the play button here. Now if you click here, you can make the animation loop. So I'm gonna play it again and now the animation should keep looping. Now we've only animated the position track. But there are more tracks that you can add from this menu. So I'm gonna add the rotation track. Now we see a new empty track in the dope sheet for rotation. So now I'm gonna go to the first frame and here manually add a keyframe. We have set the rotation value on this frame. So now we can go ahead and add more keyframes. I'm gonna come to this frame and rotate the bird. So now back in the dope sheet we have a new keyframe here. Between this keyframe and this keyframe the rotation will be animated. So now I'm gonna add more keyframes and finish the animation. Now I'm gonna play the animation and we can see our bird rotating. Now the rotation doesn't feel right because it doesn't feel like the bird is turning. It's more obvious if you look at this part. So to fix this I'm gonna come to this frame and here place a keyframe. And on this frame I'm basically gonna make it less rotated. So the bird will actually start turning after this keyframe. I'm gonna play the animation now and the turning feels much better in this part. So this way you can play around with your keyframes to make your animations more polished. Now I'm gonna go into this menu to add another track which will be scale. So this track is for scaling the item. Now at the first frame I'm gonna add a keyframe on this track. And now I'm gonna go to the last frame and add a keyframe here. And then finally at the middle of the whole track I'm gonna add another keyframe. And on this frame I'm gonna scale the bird up. So I'm gonna go to the first frame now and play the animation. And you can see how the bird gets bigger at the middle of the animation. Now if we go back into this menu, we have some more tracks here. We have color multiply which is basically the image blend color. Then we have the image index so you can control which frame is being drawn from the sprite. Then we have the image speed so that's the speed of the sprite animation. And then we have the origin of the sprite. Now we can add more tracks to make up our animation. So I'm gonna go into the asset browser and from here take the S food sprite and drop it into the sequence. I'm gonna scale it up. Now you can see the new track in the dope sheet and in the track panel. The track is very small and only lasts like one frame. So I'm gonna make it longer to fit the whole sequence. I'm gonna play the animation to see where I should place the apple. Okay so I'm gonna go to the first frame now to move the apple. We go to the first frame to set the initial position. But say I went into this frame instead and move the apple here, then this would create an animation. So that's why we go to the first frame to set the initial position. And now I'm gonna move the apple here. Now when the bird comes here and touches the apple, we want the apple to disappear to give the idea that the bird collected it. So I want the apple to disappear on this frame. So I'm simply gonna reduce the length of the track to make it end on this frame. Now the apple will disappear and it'll look like the bird collected it. So we can play the animation and it looks pretty good. Now at this point I also wanna play a sound. So I have a sound asset here which I can simply drag and drop into the sequence. And now we got a new track for our sound. So when I play the sequence, you can hear the sound. Now I'm gonna move the track to this frame so it plays when the bird collects the apple. So now we have a nice sound effect in our sequence. Now audio tracks also have their own property tracks. So we have position, rotation, fall off, pitch and volume. So a lot of stuff to play around with. I'm gonna add the volume track. Now I can go to the first frame of the track and here change the volume. So the volume will now be lower for the sound. You can also modify the pitch which can be really useful for fine tuning the sound effect. Now we're gonna play this sequence in the game with GML. So first of all I'm gonna go into the asset browser and here create a new group for objects. Now I'll create a new object and this will be O manager. I'll put it in the group. 
Now I'll go into the room and place an instance of O manager here. We're gonna use this object to play our sequence. So I'm gonna go to add event, go under key press and add the space event. I wanna play the sequence when I press space. So let's add some code in this event. Now this is the sequence that we are gonna be playing. So I'm storing it in a variable. Now we're gonna create another variable which will be the layer where the sequence will be played. So I'm just gonna create it in the instances layer. Now to actually play the sequence, we need to use the layer sequence create function. This is the function that plays the sequence in the game. There's also a sequence create function, but this is used for creating a new sequence. But for playing a sequence, you need to use the layer sequence create function. This function creates a sequence element in the layer that you give to it. So the first argument for this function will be the layer. The next two arguments will be the x and y position where the sequence will be created. So I'm gonna set that to 0 and 0 which is the top left corner of the room. Then finally we need to pass in the sequence that will be played. So with this function a sequence element will be created in the layer that will play the sequence. So we can now run the game and play our sequence. I can now press space to play the sequence. So the sequence does play but it's mostly off screen. Let's see why this is happening by going back into the sequence editor. In the center we have the origin of the whole sequence. Everything is created relative to this point. So when you create the sequence at 0 by 0 in the room, this is what you see. This is why the sequence was appearing to be off screen. Now a solution for this could be to create the sequence say at the center of the room. But you can also just move the origin inside the sequence. So I'm gonna move it to this point and now we should be able to see the animation. And now I'll run the game. If I press space, we now see our sequence. But it does keep looping, so I should probably go into the sequence and turn it off. Now when I click on this button, it changes to a ping pong mode. So this way the animation simply goes back and forth. I'm gonna click on it again to simply turn off any kind of looping. And now I'll go into the game. When I press space, the sequence plays once and then it stops. So while the sequence does end, the sequence element doesn't disappear. So you can now destroy it with layer sequence destroy or play it again with layer sequence play. Just run these functions on the sequence element that you get from layer sequence create. Now in the next video, we'll be looking at some more advanced functionality that comes with sequences. For example, we'll be creating a controllable player object and applying the animation on that. If the next part is up, it'll be here. If it isn't, you can subscribe here and turn on the notifications to get it in your inbox when I do upload it. So I'll see you in the next video.